in the early days of computing businesses heavily relied on monolithic framework systems during that time everyone had to use dumb terminals to access the mainframe dumb terminals were just screens and keyboards with no real processing power of their own these terminals couldn't do anything on their own they simply send request to the mainframe which handle everything that sounds fine right well not really the problem was that everything depends on mainframe if too many people try to use it at once it slowed down drastically if the mainframe crashed everything stopped also adding more users meant adding more terminals but the mainframe could only handle so much before it become overloaded then came client server architecture which changed everything instead of relying on a single overloaded machine the idea was to split the workload clients such as personal computers or phones could now perform some processing on their own so they were no longer just dumb terminals this separation helped offload work from the server which mainly focuses on the handling specific tasks like sorting data running application or managing requests with this client server architecture instead of every little task going to the big machine clients and servers could communicate over a network making things much faster more efficient and scalable this shift enables the development of websites online games banking systems and even cloud computing without client server architecture we would still be stuck waiting in line for a turn on some slow overloaded machine client server architecture supports scalability so if the number of clients increases more servers can be added to handle the increased volume this is something we have already discussed in our horizontal scaling video so if you want to check it out go check it out from the top right corner of your screen now before we move ahead please watch the video till the end as we have few questions and challenges for you try to participate actively in answering those questions because trust me just watching videos or reading articles won't help you unless you start thinking and identifying the solution on your own now let us understand the key components of client server architecture the first component is client it is a device or application that needs to use the services of another application to do this the client sends a request to the server containing all the necessary information for server to process and provide the required service example of clients include a mobile phone connecting to a website or an application or a desktop computer running a software application or a web browser accessing a web page it can also be an iot device sending data to the cloud server or a gaming console connecting to an online multiplayer server the next component is server it's a machine we can say a very powerful machine that processes the client requests it also perform computation connect to the external systems and do much more it is the heart of an application because the complete business logic runs on the server example of servers include a web server hosting websites and responding to the browser requests or a gaming server handling the multiplayer gaming sessions another crucial component of this architecture is the network the client will send request for data and the server processes that request and sends back a response the network makes this communication possible now when designing a system using client server architecture the client and server must agree on few things first is which protocols will be used for the communication secondly how the request from client should be structured and lastly what the response from server should look like following these guidelines ensure smooth and efficient communication between them so now the client sends a request and server responds with a response now the client need to render that response in an appropriate form rendering means generating and displaying the content on a web page there are two main approaches for rendering client side rendering and server side rendering in client side rendering the browser which is client is responsible for rendering the whole page let us first understand how it works the browser will first download the minimum html file from the server then it loads the javascript code like react or angular after that the javascript runs in the browser and used to fetch the data and generate the dynamic content this is how the client side rendering is done its benefit is once it is loaded switching between the pages is smooth it helps in creating the single page applications as well it also reduces the server load because now the server mainly provides data not the full pages that data is processed accordingly and rendered for the user in addition to these benefits 
client side rendering also comes with some problems like the page appears blank or broken until the javascript code runs and generate the page data not only that the search engines may struggle to index the content properly because the main things are getting generated and decided at the client side so the search engines will not be able to index your web pages in server side rendering on the other hand the server generates the full html page before sending it to the browser in this first the client sends a request for a page then the server processes the request and generates the complete html in the end browser receives and directly displays the ready to use html page unlike client side rendering in this the page is ready to display as soon as it loads because it does not need to wait for any javascript code to execute and generate the page components server side rendering also helps search engines to easily crawl and index the content because now it is coming from the server in the server side rendering the navigation between the pages becomes a little slow because every time page needs to render that will happen at the server side making it slower now the main question is when to go for client side and when to go for server side rendering for interactive applications like dashboards social media platforms and single page applications we should use client side rendering and on the other hand for seo heavy websites such as blogs e-commerce stores and news websites it is better to go for server side rendering in a client server architecture the client and server communicate over a network using a well defined set of rules and protocols the most common communication model used is request response model so when the client like a web browser sends a request to the server it includes some important details the first detail is url or uniform resource locator this represents the address of resource which client is requesting for example this is the url for fetching product details another important information is what http method to be used there are different http methods for different operations for example get is for retrieving the resources post is for creating a new resource on the server put is to update the existing resources and delete is to remove the resources from the server these are few most common methods similar to this we have few more methods as well so here is a question for you can you name them and their usage in the comment section below we can discuss more about them now similar to this client also sends additional information like authentication or content type in the form of headers headers are just key value pairs which are sent as a part of http request client can also send data to the server in the form of a body this body is usually made up of json data so once the request reaches the server then the server checks the request to see if it is a valid request or not after that it processes the request that might include fetching data or saving the data to the database and in the end it generates a response and sends it back to the client just like client's request the server response also contains key details such as status code which tells the client whether the request was successful or not the most common status code as 200 okay for successful 404 not found when the resource doesn't exist and 500 internal server error when there is some issue at the server level we will cover all these http methods and status codes in detail under our api session the other details server response contains is the type of data present in the response it can be application json or any other decided format and the last important part is response body which is the main data which was requested by the client the client will process this response and render accordingly in client server architecture different structures are available which will define how the components such as client server and database interact with each other let us discuss a few of those structures the first one is two tier architecture in this the client like a web application or desktop application directly communicates with the database the application logic like validation and business rules is often handled by the client side its main advantage is it is simple and easy to implement also the communication between tiers is faster as there is no middle layer on the bad side it becomes very hard to scale such solutions as the changes required to modify all the clients the best example with such architecture is a desktop application that that directly fetches and stores data in mysql database without any middle layer the second model we have is three tier architecture in this model we introduce an application server between client and the database 
client sends a request to application server and then application server processes the request and interact with the database. The presence of application server reduces the load on client because now client doesn't need to process the business logic. Using application server also centralizes the business logic, making the updates easier. Because database contains all the sensitive information for the business, having an application server adds an additional layer of security by hiding the direct access to the database. The only drawback I can think of is it becomes little more complex than the two-tier model and slightly slower due to the extra communication step in between. The best example is a mobile banking application that communicates with an API which is exposed by an application server which then queries a database. One last model that we will be discussing is N-tier or multi-tier architecture. This architecture introduces multiple layers to handle different responsibilities. A common example is we have a front-end which is a client and it requests data. Then we have a load balancer which distributes the traffic across multiple servers. Then we also have an API gateway which routes requests to the appropriate services. At application level, we can have multiple microservices which are separate services handling different tasks such as authentication, payment and notification. And one final layer of database which stores the data. This is the simplest one with these many components. It is possible that the number of components and layers can be less or more but the crux is that it has multiple layers which handle different responsibilities. Using multi-tier architecture improves scalability and performance by distributing the workloads. Now let us understand how Amazon use multi-tier architecture in their system. A large scale e-commerce website like Amazon used React application as front-end which interacts with the load balancer which is Nginx in their case. It then forwards the request to API gateway which is written in Spring Boot which routes them to the different microservices such as order service service, payment service or user service. These services talk to the database for fetching or updating the data. There are multiple other components such as caching service, CDNs and message broker services which are used to improve the overall system performance. Now we have discussed three models. But how should we decide which one should we use while designing our system? So if you are building a simple application with very few users, for example an internal tool, then you can use a two-tier architecture. And if you need better security and scalability, for example an enterprise application, then you can choose three-tier architecture. And if your system is too complex and needs microservices or also expects a high traffic and you need to scale it a lot, for example a SaaS application or a global website, then it is better to go for a multi-tier architecture. Okay, so we are almost done with the client-server architecture. Now here are a couple of questions for you to do some research. The first one is, what do you think are the common security threats in client-server communication? And the second question for you is, what do you think are the scalability challenges in client-server architecture? I'll be looking forward to see some comments with the answers. That's all for today. I hope you found this session informative. And if you think it was helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, let's keep learning.